Thank you, Sean. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is great to take you all backstage for a second time and give you all an update on what we've been working on uh, a product in Blink over the last three months. So since our last event, we've been hard at work on our new SharePoint integration that Sean just showed, but that's not all we've been working on. We have received loads of feedback through the product portal that you all have access to and from conversations with you on what other features you would like to see us add to Blink next. And I'm going to talk about four new features today, all four of which have been very popular requests for a while. And starting with how you manage your users and teams in Blink. So one of the ongoing challenges you have as an administrator in Blink is setting up your users and teams inside of Blink and keeping those up to date over time. So for those of you using uh, Azure AD or Okta, we already had a great way to pull your users into Blink through Skim. And now we've added support for syncing your group in Active Directory uh, with Blink as well. So for anyone not familiar with Skim, Skim is an open standard that allows you to automate user and group provisioning, and it's supported by tools such as Azure AD and Octane. So this means you can use your existing groups uh, in Active Directory and pull those in through Skim as teams in Blink, alongside with all uh, users that you've got inside of those uh, groups. So this should make team management a lot easier over time. Now next, I'd like to talk about a new way to tailor the notifications that you receive when you're using the feed in Blink. So currently, Blink will send you notifications about comments or likes happening on a feed post if you're the person that sent that feed post or if you've left a comment in the feed post. So we recognize you want more control over what notifications you receive. And this feature is a first improvement we are making to improve on this. You can now select to follow a feed post if you've not commented on it, on it already or to stop following a feed post after you've left a comment and you're no longer interested in getting notified or updates on that feed post. So let me show you what it looks like in the app. I'm going to bring up the desktop app and I'm in my feed here. I've got a few feed posts and for example, I've got uh, this feed post here from Felicity and I've left a comment and I've been getting some notifications on that feed post, which is great, but I'm, I'm, I've, I've heard it. I'm, I'm not going to, um, uh, want to get more notifications about this. So I'd like to stop following what's happening. And there's a new uh, option in this uh, menu here that you've got with each feed post, where you can now simply uh, select to either follow or unfollow the post on this, uh, on this feed post. Uh, and similarly, uh, for example, this one, um, I've not uh, started following any conversation here or I've not interacted with it. But here I could, for example, decide to start following what's happening and um, stay up to date with what's happening on that feed post. So that is following and unfollowing a feed post. Moving on to another feature that we've been asked for a lot, and that is having a way to find feed posts by who the sender was. So we know that as you use the feed more and more, finding that one feed post that you need can become more difficult, especially when there's a lot going on in the feed at your company. We want to make it easier for you all to find what you're looking for in the feed, and we hope this will help with that. So let me bring up the mobile app to show how that works. So I'm in my app here. Um, and um, as you've probably seen in the top left, there's, there's a button that has been there for a while, which is um, a, a filter option that allows you to filter by who has, uh, who's the feed post has been sent to. But we've got a new option in here now that allows you to also filter your feed by uh, who the feed post was sent uh, from. So that the two, as it is here, that is how you know it today, where you can select the team that this feed post has been shared with. And you've got this new from where I can select, for example, if I want to know what the news team has been sending, um, I can find that. So it also does support aliases, as you can see here. They're here at the top. But if what you probably have a lot is I want to find that one feed post that I sent a while back. So I'm logged in as Olaf in, in this demo and I can uh, find my feed post that I sent earlier um, just like that. And that is how filtering uh, for posts by how about who sent it works. And hopefully finding that one feed post that you sent a month ago will be easier than ever. Now on to the fourth and final uh, new feature that I'd like to talk about uh, today, which is all to do with language. 
So one challenge we know that many of you face is engaging with a frontline workforce that is increasingly multilingual. The different languages that are spoken within your workforce can quickly become hard to manage, especially when trying to communicate with what's happening in your company and keep everyone up to date. So inside of Blink, there are two ways we are trying to help with this challenge. And one is to make our mobile apps available in multiple languages so that the copy that's inside the app can easily be understood. We've added this a while back and we now support more than 10 languages. And now we're also adding a new way for users to translate content inside the app using a new feature we call on-demand translation. So on-demand translation is an easy way to translate feed posts, comments, and pages in Hub on the fly into more than 100 languages. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to bring up the mobile app again. So imagine if I was um, someone coming in. I'm just going to go out of where I was. If I was uh, one of your frontline workers coming in, the first thing I would do is I would go into settings. And as you can see, I've got a new language setting option here. I'm going to go in there. And there's two options or two settings I can set here. One is the app language. And that is what's going to set the language that my app, my Blink app is in. So all the copy that we've put in the app can be translated into up to 10 languages. And we can always add support if, you, if you've got requirements for a new language. You can get in touch with your customer success manager if you'd like to um, request another language. And there's a new option now, which is this translation language, uh, which is currently set to English. But let's say that, for example, I'd like to translate my content into Spanish. So I can select that language. I can press done. And now I can go back in the feed. And immediately you see a new option on this feature, a new button here that says view translation. So um, this is a post I, 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 I was posted earlier. I'm going to just press this. And it translates it right underneath in Spanish. It's kept my emoji, which is, which is really cool. Uh, there's another feed post right below, something about rolling out a really cool new app. That sounds pretty cool. Let me translate that. And it's all translated in Spanish. It's kept my, my rich styles that I've used in my feed post, which is obviously, which is great. Similarly, there's a comment left here on a feed post that I saw earlier. If I want to translate that, that's also possible. And it just gets swapped with the translation, in this case, in Spanish. Um, last. If I've got a page that um, I'd like to access a lot, and one page I like to look at often is my benefits page. So I can go in, sorry, and go in and there's a new button now um, telling me I can translate this, which is awesome because I would like to read all about all these cool benefits is gone. All right. It's all in Spanish now and I can understand it in my mother tongue, for example, if it was in Spanish. So that is on-demand translation. And that also completes the features that I was talking about or was going to talk about today. So the features that I've talked about, um, scheme group sync, following or unfollowing feed posts, and the new on-demand translation add-on, they are available now. And the new filter for feed by sender will be coming to a blink near you next week. Now you're probably all wondering what features are going to come next. And to talk more about that, I'd like to hand over to our product director, Lawrence. Lawrence? Hi, Gavin. Thank you very much. Let me share my screen. Hi, everyone. I'm very thrilled to be here and be able to have a chance to give you a sneak peek of some of the things we're working on, most of which will be released very soon, a few that will take a bit longer, but bear with us, they are coming. Um, I thought we'd kick things off with two features, kind of building on top of the skim group sync that stuff that Gavin just showed, but two features coming for admins to help remove the burden of team and user management. They are bulk change to and dynamic teams. With bulk change to users, um, this is a brand new tool. It's built on top of our existing import flow where you can import up to 5,000 users at once. This now allows you to change up to 5,000 user profiles at once. So if you're changing domains for your company and you need to give up on a new email address, you're restructuring the company and need to give everyone um, a new line manager or move them around teams, or you've made a mistake, you've added a typo into your, into your import and you need to go and correct that, this is the tool for you. On top of that, dynamic teams is something I'm very, very excited about. Um, it's again to do with like team management and making that a lot easier for you. And what it basically allows you to do is set rules to automatically add, remove users into and out of teams. Good example would be um, you want everyone with a job title like engineer who works in Grand Rapids, Michigan to be added to your region six team. 
this will do it for you and it will save you time. So I guess the benefit of here is saving admins time, but the flip side of that is it makes sure that those people, those engineers in Grand Rapids have access to everything they need all of the time. You don't have to go in and when you add someone new to the company, you don't have to go and make sure they're in the right teams. As long as they have the right job title, the right location, or some other rules you can set up, they'll be there. They'll have access to everything in feed and hub that you need. Right, the next thing I'm going to show you is a feature that's live, but one some of you might not know about and one I make use of quite a lot. It is in feed, it is on mobile. And what it allows you to do is preview a post before you send it. It's really simple. You go and create your, your feed post as you do today. And then if you go into this post formatting menu that you will have seen, you click on this button in the bottom right hand corner. And there you are, preview of your post. So if you spot any typos or you want to change an image, just click back, make the change, preview it again, and just be fully comfortable with what you're about to send out before you send it. Right, Sean's kind of ruined this a little bit for me. Um, I was going to talk to you about a brand new iOS experience. He seems to have leaked that already, but I'll just have to up one. I'll have to, yeah, up him a bit. So he's shown off a few screens. Um, the app looks incredible, but it's not just a fresh lick of paint. Every single screen has been updated. Typo typography has been improved for legibility. Animations and tra transitions are slicker and apps faster, more accessible and more responsive than ever. A few of us have got it on our phones already and it's such a joy to use. I can't wait if you get hands on it and a massive well done to the team who've been working hard on it. It's coming really soon. And this is where I um, get one over on Sean. We're not stopping there. We're already looking into what's coming next. And Sean hasn't even seen this. Um, we are looking into ways and new ideas for how we can make your content content shine, how we can make it sure it reaches everyone, how it looks more engaging, gets people engaging with it, giving you more data to control what happens within your workforce, looking at ways to make all charts more visual and easier to use and navigate throughout, you know, up and down your hierarchy at work. I mean, watch this space, there's loads of cool stuff coming. Um, if anyone wants to talk, to talk to me about it, please do. We're looking for ideas of how we can build on this to make it better and better for you. And finally, a feature that I know a load of you are waiting for, and I'm very thrilled to say that being able to set a status on your user profile is coming, and it's coming soon. So very soon on all three apps, iOS, Android, and web, you'll be able to set a status to say, tell everyone you're away and the option to add a little status message to give them a bit more context, whether you're on holiday, who's contacting your absence. Um, so everywhere your avatar will appear throughout the app, you'll see a little red cross to tell everyone you're not currently available. And if they go into a chat with you, they'll see things like your status message. So that's where they'll be able to see you're away, you're back on the 24th of August and in your absence, talk to Gavin. Can't wait for you to have that. I can't wait to use it either. And finally, just to wrap up and kind of echo what Gavin said a few minutes ago, we do have a way for everyone on this call and everyone who ever uses Blink to tell us what they need in Blink. Um, if you head over to portal.joinblink.com, it's a great way to vote for the features that we're looking into. You can tell us which of those are most important to you. But if it's not, this is there, there's a button in the bottom, there's a button in the bottom corner to, to submit your own ideas. That's all. Well, that's not all. There's lots and lots of other cool stuff coming. But for now, I'll hand over to Flo, our wonderful customer success lead. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, and hello, everybody. Um, today, I'm going to be showing you a very exciting new micro app um, that will be available to all of you. We've called this micro app Colleague Recognition. Its purpose is to empower your employees to recognize each other's efforts and acknowledge the incredible things that they've done. So this feature can be used to celebrate fantastic work, thank yous, anniversaries, birthdays, and so on, all directly to the feed. So now I'm going to show you how it works. Now, what you can see here is obviously the mobile app, but of course, colleague recognition will work uh, just the same on, on web and desktop as well. All you need to do is add the micro app to your hub via the admin portal. So in this instance, you can see that I've added the colleague recognition micro app to the form section that you can see here but I've also made it a quick link. So it becomes a tile at the top of the page. So it makes it really easy for my workforce to access it at any time. If I want to recognize an employee or a colleague, all I need to do is click on or tap colleague recognition. In this example here, there are five different options. So we've got thank you, you're a star, work anniversary, happy birthday and congratulations. So the micro app as it is right now, as you can see here, is available to all of you. But 
it is entirely customizable. So if you would like to discuss customized options or ways that you want to personalize it yourself, please reach out to, to my team, Customer Success, your Customer Success Manager, or our Customer Support Team, um, and we can get some more information on this for you. For this example, I'm going to choose your star. So then you need to choose the individual that you want to recognize. Um, so in this case, in this example, I'm going to choose Donna. Then you have the option to personalize it a bit more so you can add a bit more of a message to thank that person. So at the moment, my post is only going to go to Donna, but what I want to do is I want to more publicly recognize and reward her for her hard work. So just the same as it is whenever you share a post to the feed, you can choose teams, you can choose individuals or a mixture of the two. Um, but what I want to do is I want to choose the Flows Demo team, which is my all encompassing company team. So everybody will be able to see this piece of recognition. Then you get the option to look at a preview double check everything, make sure everything's working really well. Um, if there's anything that you want to edit, all you need to do is click on the back arrow button in the top left hand corner and you can go back and change things. Um, but if you're happy and you're ready to share it, all you do is click share. Then your piece of kudos has been shared and you have the option to return to Blink or if you want to recognize another colleague or another employee, you can send some more kudos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to return to Blink because I want to show you what it now looks like on the feed. So everybody in the audience that I've shared this piece of recognition to can now see this in the feed and everybody can like, comment and congratulate that individual even more. <laughs> 